Uh, we'll hear argument now in number 95-1268, Maryland against Jerry Lee Wilson, uh, General Kern. Mr. Chief Justice, and may it please the court. Nearly 20 years ago, this court held in the case of Pennsylvania versus Sims that it was reasonable under the Fourth Amendment for a police officer in making a car stop for a traffic violation to require the driver to exit the car. The risk to the officer uh, is such in these stops that it was also um, permitted for the officer to request the driver to get out without any suspicion that the driver would pose a danger uh, to the officer. The latest figures that we have available demonstrate that the risks are real to police officers in traffic stops. The latest figures in 1994 show that 5,762 police officers were assaulted in traffic stops. Indeed, since the decision in NIMS, there have been over 200 police officers slain in traffic stops. Because passengers, like drivers, have actually... When you say assaulted in traffic stops, does that include those who were assaulted by people who got out of the car and physically assaulted them? The, yes, yes, the well, that would the other way. way. I mean, that, they'd be better off to leave them in the car. If that, you know, if that's the assault you're talking about. Well, there were uh, a total of some 52,000 assaults during that given year of 94, of which 5,700 were in traffic stops. Uh, what I'm suggesting is the relevant figure is how many of the assaults came while all the person was in the car so that they might have been prevented by making the person get out of the car. Those many of them may have occurred by taking the person out of the car. Those figures are not available, uh, Your Honor. Isn't it true, General Kern, I, I remember this from the men's case, that there's a split of professional opinion on whether it is safer for the officer to order them out of the car or to tell them to stay in the car. Is there still a respected body of professional law enforcement opinion that says you're safer if you don't ask them to get out of the car? Well, indeed, Justice Stevens, the, the typical practice, and I can refer to Maryland, of course, but I believe the briefs will show the typical practice is uh, to control the risk that's what the training is, control the risk, and typically they keep the driver and the passenger in the car. However, having said that, uh, as the New York versus class case indicated, there is this discretion the officer can use, and what we're asking, of course, is the automatic rule for that discretion to be utilized uh, in the Wilson case as this court granted in the Mims case. General Kern, are you saying then that, that if the officer made the decision to keep the person inside, it would be the officer's call, too. Suppose the passenger says, I want out, I'm going to take a car and go home. I'll take a cab and go home. The answer is yes, uh, Justice uh, Ginsburg. We want the officer to be able to uh, require the passenger to get out or where appropriate to stay in. And in order to control the stop, uh, the officer has to be able to control the location of uh, the passenger. And the location can be outside the car, or it could be, in an appropriate case, inside the car. How so far does the authority extend? Would you say that the passenger would be free to leave if the passenger chose after exiting the car at the officer's request? No, Your Honor. We do not take that position. We want the officer to be able to control the risk, control the location. Well, you want more than the right to require the passenger to exit. You want to require uh, the passenger to be detained. Yes, Your Honor. We For want, how long? Uh, we want, there is no time frame as, uh, I can tell you what the typical To be searched? No, Your Honor. Not a frisk. To uh, be asked any questions? Could be asked, but not required to answer. Um, to get out, to step aside, to show your hands. That so you be, say there's no time limit. I, I assume time can be no more than is reasonably required for the officer to complete the process of issuing the citation? Yes, Your Honor. It would be within what is typically uh, uh, 10 or at the outside 20 minutes. Can you order some people in the car and some people out of the car? Yes, Your Honor, you could. What would be the reason for detaining the passenger in a situation like that? I can see that safety reasons might suggest that you'd be able to, uh, the officer be uh, allowed to uh, order the passenger out of the car, but for, for detaining them if they then wish to leave, what would be the Fourth Amendment reason for that? The, the officer has to, Mr. Chief Justice, the officer has to be able to control the stop, to complete safely the transaction, getting the information from the driver, the registration, the license, etc. And in order to do that safely, he needs to be able to know where any potential danger to him or her lies, controlling the location of, in this case, Mr. Wilson would have been the appropriate way to do that. He could have seen that he did not uh, pose a particular danger by seeing his hand. We, we are to 
suggesting that the balancing that this court went through in MIMS is really the same for the Mr. Wilsons, the passengers. There is this uh, compelling governmental interest of police safety, which is, is acknowledged, against what is a de minimis intrusion against Mr. Wilson, with there's already been a diminished expectation of privacy by being in the car in the first place. This right to control the site, I, uh, what's your best uh, citation from this court giving you that authority, Michigan and Summers? Well, Michigan and Summers, uh, uh, Justice Is that uh, the closest case? Would be able, sir? Is that the closest case to support the proposition that the officer does have this authority to control the location? Yes, Your Honor. To control the safe completion of, in that case, uh, the search of the house, he had to have the ability to make certain that uh, he could safely and successfully complete the search. In the same way it goes here, well, the officer... But there is a difference. I mean, the driver was stopped because there was reason to believe he had violated a traffic law or requirement, that the driver was speeding or making an illegal turn or without a license on the car or whatever. But there is no such uh, suspicion on the part of the passenger who was not driving the car. And I don't think Pennsylvania versus Mims, which says, yes, you can require the driver to step out and wait until the ticket is issued or a resolution is made on that question. But I'm just not sure what the authority is for detaining a passenger who is required to step out. The passenger is not suspected of an illegal driving offense. Justice O'Connor, we would, we would respectfully suggest that it's the MIMS decision that required the driver to exit, not because in this case he was speeding, as was the probable cause, or not because there was a faulty tag, but because the uh, court concluded that there was potential danger. And so for the reason that they wanted police safety was the reason Mims got out of the car, not yes, because but it was. Nevertheless, uh, they had a right to stop the car because it was an alleged traffic violation by the driver. Isn't that so? Otherwise, they couldn't have stopped the car at all, this, presumably. That is correct. Okay. Honor. And that reason does not apply to the passenger. So I'm trying to understand what is your authority for claiming the right not only to require the passenger to exit, but to detain the passenger. If Your Honor, please, when there was um, the stop of the Mims car or the Wilson car, by virtue of physics, both are seized or both are detained. So there the driver and the passenger are identical. Uh, they're both seized, they're both stopped. If, in fact, the rationale of MIMS is to be conveyed to the passenger, the safety of the officer, it's equally apparent that the passenger would have had much, just as much access to the gun as Mr. MIMS would have had. But so, it's not just physics, it, it's privacy and dignity, and we all know that uh, the police uh, will take our decisions as far as, uh, as their language and logic permit, and I'm just concerned that you're going to have routine practices of whole families and four or five occupants of the car being required to stand outside while the officer lectures the driver. And that's just going to happen, isn't it? Well, Justice Kennedy, that could happen now in MIMS because without any discretion or any guidelines, uh, the officer now may, in that case, require someone to exit. Well, but that's what we're here to decide. And, and for the and, same... And you're, you're proposing a, a general automatic rule that passengers can always be required to exit at the demand of the officer. Yes, yes, Your Honor. That is, that's the proposal that we have, and the rationale being that the order out in MIMS was not because of the traffic violation, but because of the finding that there is a, it's a compelling reason for police safety to require the officer but, to make... But you have a... You have a uh, a lesser interest on the part of the uh, driver in privacy or not being free from whatever you were what searching. The driver, there's probable cause to believe that the driver has committed an offense. Whereas there isn't any probable cause to believe that the passenger has committed offense, an offense. So the calculus, if, you, if it's a weighing process, the interest of the passenger would seem stronger than the interest of the driver. Mr. Chief Justice, I would take position that the privacy interests of the driver and the passenger are identical. However, if the court should so find that there is a minor privacy interest difference, uh, notwithstanding, there still is 
as far as the passenger is concerned, he already has a diminished expectation of privacy. And with that diminished expectation of privacy, we're talking about a very diminished intrusion. Well, not necessarily. Suppose it's a driving snowstorm or a blinding rainstorm. The passenger is a mother with a very young baby, and the officer automatically can order her out of the car to put the baby down outside where he can see it, the baby and raise her hands up. And real damage can occur. And there is no reason that the car was stopped because of what that passenger was doing under the circumstances here. Now, maybe an officer can see a passenger in the car holding a gun. Well, that's a different situation, isn't it? But is there any, uh, and, and suppose the court thinks there is a real difference between the driver and the passenger in that the driver legitimately can be stopped for what the officer perceives is a traffic violation. Yes, Justice Connor, I, I see the point you're trying to raise, and obviously the question of a baby and a, a young mother out in the rain is obviously not right. However, yes, Your Honor, we do want the automatic rule, and I might add the same. And it will work automatically, too, because yes. bureaucracies being what they are, in order to protect themselves from claims of discrimination, making some people get out because of their race or because of whatever else, to be sure that no such claims will be available, they will make everybody get out. That'll be an invariable rule. With respect, Justice Scalia, uh, with respect, Justice Scalia, I appreciate the question. Um, that same scenario, of course, could happen under MIMS. And MIMS has now been with us for 19, almost But the question is, do you have concerns about it? Do you, as the chief law enforcement officer of your state, have concerns about a rule uh, where throughout your state, maybe throughout the country, all of the occupants of every vehicle that's stopped uh, for a traffic offense can be ordered to get out of the car and routinely are required to parade them, required to remain in public view while the citation process is going on. Do you have any concerns about that? Well, I obviously have, yes, Justice Kennedy, I obviously have a concern. Uh, the, the point we're making, though, is that removing the driver doesn't eliminate the danger that we talked about in MIMS. The passenger has equal access to the same revolver that Mr. MIMS would have had. So removing the driver does not eliminate the problem. Uh, yes, I admit that Justice O'Connor, we have suppose the passenger has certain dementia. If an old parent who left to his own would just wander away and not even understand what was being said to him. But automatically, you're going to get this passenger out and require him to stay, and if he doesn't understand, shoot him. Well, you know, I, I just, this can be carried to extremes, and you seem to don't even recognize that there might be a difference. Well, I, I do understand, Justice O'Connor, there's a difference. I'm simply suggesting is that removing the driver does not remove the danger. In fact, everybody the danger... Agrees that. I, I just, everybody agrees with that, but the question is the risk of abuse. Now, I, I noticed in the opinion, but I, maybe it's in the briefs and I didn't see it, it says several jurisdictions already have extended means to passengers. Is there any indication that there are any of these problems or that there are not these problems in the other jurisdictions that have already adopted the rule that you want? Your Honor, I, I'm not able to say that I have researched the cases in the other jurisdictions, but indeed I will tell you that there are the majority, there are 20 states that have ruled the way Maryland wishes to rule, and there are five, including the District of Columbia, so there's 21 areas, including there are five, four or five uh, federal circuit courts, mostly in the so western we'd have, area. We'd have to look at those. There is a, those up. There's a substantial majority that are, have ruled this way. There's five that have ruled against us, to be honest with you. I, I have another question which I wanted to ask, which is that, that um, I didn't know until this argument that you are suggesting that the uh, police should have the right to detain the passenger. I thought that uh, you were set after, suppose the passenger gets out of the car and the policeman asks him to, and then he says, I've fed up with this, I want to take a bus. And the bus goes along and he takes it. Are you arguing that the policeman should be free to tell him, no, you can't take the bus? Yes, Your Honor. Well, where is, I didn't find that in your brief, and I don't know what the rationale for that would be. It, it, it is in our brief and in our argument in terms of the, the ability to control, Your Honor, the location. The, uh, the individual may say, I wish to take a bus and go elsewhere. 
Uh, the author need not accept that as.